Hi, I'm Katrin Redfern, and you're watching Stageworks. Now, I recently saw a really well done production of Henrik Ibsen's Ghosts, and I want to talk about what made it so memorable, but also a bit about Ibsen's contribution to drama in general. If you're in London, you're in luck, because the play is in the West End until March. If you're somewhere else, I'm going to try and make up for it. I guarantee you'll learn something. So first, to set the scene, a family home amid the misty fjords of 1880s Norway, where long-held secrets are waiting to emerge. The set and lighting creates a visual language for Ibsen's drama of light and shadow, drawing from the work of Scandinavian artists like Edvard Munch, Wilhelm Hammershoi and Ibsen's own paintings, and conjures a dark beauty like an Ingmar Bergman film. The trailer for the play will give you a good sense of the atmosphere they created on stage. I'm not frightened of God, only the ghosts in my life. Not just the people that haunt us, but what we inherit from our parents. Dead ideas, dead customs, dead morals. Ghosts looming out. They're all over us, smothering us as if we were buried alive in sand. And we're all so frightened of burrowing up into the light. The ghosts in Ibsen's momentous play refers to those entrenched patterns of behavior and limiting customs and expectations that we inherit and find difficult to shrug off. Ellen Alving, the protagonist, has spent her life suspended in an emotional void after the death of her cruel but outwardly charming husband. Weary of protecting the family's honor, she finally summons the courage to cut through all the lies and reveal that her husband was kind of a dick, and had made her life a misery. She's even had the daughter he had with their maid living in her house all these years. The tragedy is that she decides to stop keeping up appearances too late, and at a point which coincides with the realization that her son Oswald, newly returned from living the high life in Paris, and interested in this undercover half-sister of his, is being eaten inside by syphilis a long-term gift from his philandering father. The superb Leslie Manville is a subtle and searching Mrs. Alving, who starts out with a confident and capable exterior, and thus has a scintillatingly long way to fall. There's an intriguing sense of the beginnings of a liberal, independent life that she started to carve out for herself in the suffocating Norwegian backwater, watched over by the disapproving Pastor Manders. There's an edge of recklessness to the bitter humor and disappointment with which he confronts the Lutheran minister, who insisted that she return to her husband when she sought his love and help. With his pedantic expression and pinched tone, Will Keane brings out what is grimly ludicrous in this officious spiritual advisor who, while adamantly convinced of his own rightness, is an unerringly bad judge of character. Ghosts is a spring-coiled 90-minute arc of secrets and lies, setting off dramatic fireworks all in a single room, the performance unfolding with alertness and intensity to its devastating conclusion. In the climactic final scene, as Jack Loden's charismatic, anguished Oswald descends into the madness of his disease and his harrowingly distressed mother contemplates euthanasia, the translucent walls of Tim Hatley's set are flushed with a blood-red Nordic dawn. Sir Richard Eyre directs the fourth of his five major productions this year, and from the start his staging is vibrant, forceful, and swift-footed. As he said, by the end we're left wondering, bloody hell, how did we end up here? Eyre also did the translation, as he's done previously, adapting and directing Hedda Gabler, also at the Amida Theatre. The dialogue has a freshness and immediacy, managing to convey the time without lapsing into anachronism. So, that's the production that's in store for you if you head to the West End. The best of Ibsen's work, wherever you see it, speaks to his vision of thwarted human potential. From Ibsen we have Nora from A Doll's House, Hedda Gabler, Mrs. Alving, Rebecca West from Rosmersholm, Petra Stockman from An Enemy of the People, 
All are trapped in convention and repression. And all are women. Ibsen was particularly interested in the limitations placed on women and provides us with some of the few plays with central characters who are female. It really is rare, folks. So thanks for that, Ibsen. The great political activist Emma Goldman wrote, The voice of Henrik Ibsen in Ghosts sounds like the trumpets before the walls of Jericho. Into the remotest nooks and corners reaches his voice with its thundering indictment of our moral cancers, our social poisons. As with Chekhov, Ibsen sees boredom and indifference to suffering as the insidious malaise that infects his society. Every man, he said, shares the responsibility and the guilt of the society to which he belongs. To live is to war with trolls in heart and soul. To write is to sit in judgment on oneself. Apparently, Ibsen liked to judge his appearance as well. He had a mirror sewn into his hat band so he could admire himself. He rocked a pretty big look. Check out those sideburns. Not the hottest guy around, but luckily he was good with pen and paper. Ghost was written when Ibsen was living in Rome. It was customary at that time to publish plays before they were performed, and the play appeared in bookshops in Denmark shortly thereafter. He anticipated its reception thusly. It is reasonable to suppose that ghosts will cause alarm, but so it must be. If it did not, it would not have been necessary to write it. He wasn't to be disappointed. The play was called Revoltingly Suggestive and Blasphemous. This was 1881. Large piles of unsold copies were returned to the publisher, the booksellers embarrassed by their presence on the shelves. Ghost was sent to a number of theaters in Scandinavia who all rejected it. It was first performed by Danish and Norwegian amateurs in a hall in Chicago for an audience of Scandinavian immigrants. Shortly after Ebsen's death in 1906, director Max Reinhardt asked a Norwegian artist, Edvard Munch, to design the set for the production of Ghosts that was to open his new theater in Berlin. Munch designed an expressionist set that surrounded Biedermeier furniture with oppressive walls of ochre yellow. I wanted to stress the responsibility of the parents, he said, but it shows my life too, my why. For youth was a sick room and life a shiny sunlit window with glorious colors and glorious joys. And out there I wanted so much to take part in the dance, the dance of life. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'd love to hear from you on Twitter at StageWorks007 by email or on Facebook. Bye for now. Thank you.